Yes? Would be having a slope, yeah. So, so basically, yeah, that's that's correct. So let's trap this maximum value, right? As time advances, the value, the maximum value, seems to be moving towards the left, right? So this is the for for the case when I have uh, uh, a equal to negative pi. So the the value, the maximum value, seems to be going towards the left, right? And also, so does the minimum value, right? The minimum value is also going towards the left. So, so as t increases, the minimum value also comes towards the left. And so does every value. So all points, all the contours is going to be going towards the left, except for uh, some places uh, uh, are red, some places are blue, right? The different uh, values. OK? Does that make sense for this? partial differential equation? It does, right? Because if a is negative pi, that means du dt is equal to pi times du dx. So du dt is equal to pi times du dx. Uh, if you take derivative to this direction, it's equal to a proportional to derivative in that direction, right? Okay, or I can prove actually analytically if I have a function like that. I mean, a function like that means the solution u, x, and t is some function of only a variable in this direction, a linear combination of x and t, right? It, it, the, the value, the solution doesn't depend on whether you're here or here. It only depends on where you are in this, which contour you are on. So in this case, u of x and t is actually a function of x plus something times t. Guess what that something is? A? Huh? Pi, right, or, or pi or minus a. So, so in this case, is uh, pi is equal to minus a, right? So, so in general, it could be minus a. So, so let me actually write it uh, a little bit more generally. Uh, so, this case is actually x minus a times t. And uh, how do I prove that? Um, if if I have any function in this form, any differentiable function in this form, my du dx if you are no longer familiar with chain rule, it's a good time to get familiar with that again. I mean, in PDs, we're going to be using chain rules a lot. OK, uh, du dx is, uh, is going to be using chain rule. OK, df, well, basically the derivative of f. I'm just going to write f prime times the derivative of this guy. to x, which is what? Well, let, let me write it uh, a bit more clearly. So this is df dx minus at, right, uh, times this. Agreed? And what is the second part of this uh, chain rule? 1, right? Because uh, uh, here we are holding t as fixed, taking partial derivative. So we only have x to work with. dx dx is 1, right? So, so it's actually equal to, I'm just going to write f prime. OK, how about du dt? It's the same first term, but the second term is d dt, right? Is partial x minus a t, partial t. Now partial derivative to t, which means take x to be fixed, right? Only differentiate with respect to t. What is that? Negative a, still we have f prime, right? OK, so if we combine them, look at this equation. du dt, which is this guy, plus a times du dx, which is this guy, a times this guy, is 0 for sure, right? For any f. For any f, this is satisfied. And which f is it? It's completely dependent on my initial condition and boundary conditions, right? If I, if I set periodic boundary condition, then basically my initial condition is going to fix what f I have, right? t equal to 0. 
f of x is my initial condition. Then I just evolve, right? Things just shift towards the left if a is negative, shift towards the right if a is positive. All right, so we have an equation where we know it's analytical solution. And uh, that's a great case for us to study how we discretize them. Because once we discretize them, uh, we are going to be comparing the appro our approximate solution with this analytical solution. OK, so uh, let's actually stop over here. We are going to be discussing the second term a little bit uh, uh, later. But uh, we are going to see if we just uh, have the first term, a uh, first order derivative in x, how do we solve equations like that?